Does it work? Yeah. All right. So, uh, guys, this is, let's see now, introducing the course is BAF, whatever that means. Three, oh, one. Is that the class we're in? Yes. Okay. It's financial management. Uh, it's nice to see so many or all of you familiar faces, so I don't have to introduce myself. All I'll do is just introduce the course itself. First, begin with next book is exactly the same, financial management. It says principles and applications by Tittman. Tittman, that's the name. All right. Now, camera. You gotta zoom in a little bit. Nice, <laughs> nice zoom in so that it's easily see. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So that's learning. All right, everyone having fun? Yeah. Okay, okay we'll zoom back out. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is the following. This is the game plan as follows. The textbook has 20 chapters, and 20 chapters has been planned for two semesters. For this semester, the game plan is chapter 1 through chapter 10. And we go as usual, chapter 1 to the thing, chapter 2 to the thing. But what we may do is a little bit of reshuffle, which I'll explain in a few minutes. So, let's go over the chapters uh, very quickly. You will see this in the syllabus, right? You can see this in the syllabus. You can open your eye toys. The first two chapters, chapters one and two, are introductory chapters. It introduces the subject in the field and whatever it is. And introduces, number two, introduces also what's called the financial environment. And the financial environment is basically a little introduction to financial markets, to financial institutions, maybe to some financial, basic financial instruments. This will get you up and started. Number two, or let's call it, this is part one. Part two will be chapters three and four. And chapters three and four will be financial statements. Financial statements, that will be the balance sheet, the income statement, cash flow statement, okay? And financial statement. Announce Come on guys, quiet. Financial statement analysis. And this will be essentially accounting. Essentially accounting. All right. Now, some of you guys giggle a little laugh. You got to understand, this is by far one of the hardest courses in business, in all business, especially if you're a business student, this is likely to be the hardest course, course that you'll have. And I'll be explaining again with the next 10 minutes for you to understand why, okay? Yeah, get, get this guy a chair or whatever. I'm just hanging out. Now, part number three. Part number three will be chapters five and six. It is shortened as E V M, standing for time value 
the money. This is usually the killer for most students. This is where most students fail. It's a bitch, you know. It sucks real bad. But you have to learn it. And what happens is a lot of times is a lot of textbooks move this early on. I've been thinking to do the same here is to get this time value of money and put it up front. Now, some textbooks put this as first part, they get the introduction, then they get the time value of money. Some textbooks do completely different. And I'll keep explaining now. Chapters 7 and 8. And chapters 7 and 8 will be risk. And return the two most important concepts in uh, finance, risk and return. So, some textbooks begin with introduction, then they go time, value of money, then they go risk and return, and finish at the very end with financial statements. Others will begin with financial statements, go like this, and then like this. And I didn't even see the opposite, actually, yesterday. So, from the introduction, they go straight up to risk. And after risk, they go to financial, uh, sorry, to time value of money, and then they go statements. So, these chapters are, and sections are, relatively independent of each other, okay? Risk and return. Now, here is what makes this course relatively tricky. This time value of money requires math and a lot of calculations. So, you need to have a solid or some basic background of math. And you'll need to learn a little to play with yet another toy, a financial calculator. Now, there is a general requirement that you actually have to learn the calculator. But the good news is it's easy. It's designed and made in general to be used easy uh, around the world. So, uh, we will be doing a lot of problems when well, we'll be doing a lot of problems. And finally, part five will be chapters nine and chapters ten, and we'll just call them, uh, they use a different name, they call it debt valuation, valuation of debt, and uh, it's a little better and easy to call it bond valuation. And number 10 will be stock valuation. So, this section is risk and this section is on valuation. Now, we got 10 chapters for roughly just about 15 or so weeks. This means that I'll try to get one and two as quickly as possible out of the way and then focus on uh, this part over here so that you get to learn the calculations because that's where the real hard part is. Now, for this time value of money, it will help the following. It will help, number one, that you find a website which has a financial calculator. There are hundreds, possibly by now, thousands of websites with financial calculators. Okay. So it will help you to find a site with a calculator so that you can actually get to uh, check your calculations with the calculator. And number two, you can use, and it's actually amazingly easy to use Excel for these calculations. So it may make sense to bring one of your eye toys, whatever you have, a MacBook or just any kind of laptop. It may even be possible for some of you to use Excel on your phone if it has the financial functions so that you can just type in a little, just plug in the numbers and it will do the calculations for you. So, it's nice to learn 
to use the calculator and you should, that's the basic requirement. It's also nice to use Excel. Excel. It's actually very, very easy to use. I mean, some students happen to be smart and learn it in about 10 to 15 minutes. Well, others it may take an hour or two, but that's what you do. That's your job and again, part of my job is to, to help work with that. Let's see what else I got. Well, what else I got is fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, there will be, uh, your grades will be based on some attendance. That's fairly straightforward. A midterm, which is defined to be 20% by the university. A final exam, it's going to be 40%. And then we're going to go and have three quizzes, the standard stuff. Basically, uh, we go through a part, particular part, quiz, another part, quiz, another part, maybe midterm, another part, quiz, the last one, final. Okay, that's all very uh, straightforward. Usually, the quiz will be one week after we complete the material. So, whenever we complete chapters one and two, one week after that or so will be the quiz, okay? So that's fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, that's at least what I have. Uh, you need to get the textbook. You need to get the textbook. Also, uh, again, this course is not a joke. It's uh, probably the hardest course. We got a lot of stuff to do. And uh, you will need, the most important thing for all of these are Problems, problems, problems. You will need to solve a lot of problems. So I'll try to do what we already did before. I'll try to solve a number of problems for you after each chapter. But what we'll try to do is I'll try to solve them somehow on the board with a calculator and with Excel. You all have to have the calculator with you and you follow me. And then we're going to have usually one or two hours of exercise where we're just going to go through problem one, problem two, problem three. We'll just go through the exercises, okay, uh, through them. And of course, in finance now, it's very easy to make up all sorts of uh, uh, problems. So, now what makes uh, this course again a little bit more difficult is that here the requirement for concepts is between 30 and 50 percent. So, you will actually need to learn the concepts. You'll actually have to learn to explain what is risk, what is return, what is the trade off, what is whatever the different concepts are. So, that's about 50 percent of the class. So, we need to have the concepts. You need to understand what's what. And then the other one, you can call it calculations if you like, you can call it math if you like, you can call it problems. Some of these will include statistics and that's about another 50 up to possibly 70 percent. So the standard requirement for pretty much anywhere in the world and with kind of like uh, that's how it's uh, done is to have a roughly 50-50 to split it. So you need to learn the concepts, but you also need to do. So what makes the course difficult is you have to learn the concepts, but at the same time you got to do the math. At the same time you got a lot of accounting, you got a lot of math, and there is risk is associated with statistics. So, you have a little bit of statistics, some math, some accounting, and valuation is basically finance, pure finance. So, it's an integration of a lot of different courses and a lot of uh, different disciplines. Now, I may push, there is possibly, possibility to push this whole financial statements and financial analysis very late and get a little earlier, meaning we just go part one, then we go with time value money, and then we go with risk. 
Uh, first, because this is just a little bit harder, but there is another reason, and another reason is uh, the following. Let me uh, make a little uh, advertising. Uh, I will be teaching course fourth year students, but also possibly third year students, and any of you who might be uh, ambitious or interested or curious in learning investments. And investments, pretty much the only basic requirements are time value of money and risk, okay? These are already covered in detail in the textbook, but it helps to have these as a background. So, some of you may want to choose and take an extra course in investments. And as we go through the investments textbook, this will come early enough so that you could be taking financial management and investments at the same time and be uh, sufficiently well prepared for both courses. So, if you choose, this is whatever the name is, this is the DAF421 and in investments, the game plan is amazingly uh, simple. The game plan is basically, I'm trying to get through the chapters, it's just go chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's the introduction, chapter 2, sorry, part 2, chapter 6, 7, 8 portfolio theory, which is mostly risk and return. Chapter, what is it? Uh, part 3, chapters 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay? So this is a little more advanced, it's a lot harder, we're going to cover a lot more material, but that's what we do. This is mostly for finance majors or anyone else who is enthusiast. Alright, we can uh, see if you guys have any questions? If not, we'll take a five minute uh, uh, break. I'll try to get the attendance sheet and then we get on with the business of uh, chapter one. Let's see, any questions that relate to the course? Uh, the organization of the course is very straightforward. As I told you, there's most likely, I'll push this late in the course and I'll pull this a little earlier and possibly this a little earlier. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, again, for all quizzes, for all exams, you would and should expect that you'll be getting roughly half of the problems of the questions will be in terms of concepts. Explain this, explain that, or what does this mean, what is this that, or what is the relationship, and the other half will be just basic calculations. Questions? Any questions? Any questions? No? All right. Yeah.